Hey guys, Andrew here with just a quick announcement before we dive into this week's podcast. Uh, I just like to say that in times like these, we, as in Serpents US, uh, feel that it is important that people find themselves turning to spirituality when faced with such a hardship like we are facing today. And being that our sole purpose is Serpents US, or as entertainers in general, uh, is to serve those in need of inspiration, fantasy, and enlightenment. I just wanted to say that this pandemic will make no difference to our mission or to the ideals that serve as the very foundation of our existence as a musical entity today. Uh, using the vessel that is esoteric art, uh, I just want to say we are here and here we will remain. Okay? And uh, another announcement is our new video for The Lust of the Lawless uh, will premiere during this year's Vernal Equinox via our friends at Metal Injection this Thursday, March 19th, 2020, okay? Yes, we and many others like us have been severely affected by this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, perhaps permanently, but no. We'd like to say with pride that we do not want any monetary support from you all during this strenuous time, as we believe our initiates are in just as much pain, if not more, as we are, and we do not wish to put our supporters in a worse position than they already might be in, just in order to keep our own dreams alive. So with this being said, uh, I also want to announce that we will also be rele uh, releasing everyone's funds for the Born of Ishtar vinyl reissue pre-orders, in hopes that this small refund offers a bit of relief to our supporters as well at this time. However, the only thing that we'd like to ask of you all, or for those that wish to continue supporting us, is that you all tune in to Metal Injection this Thursday and watch the video that we've deliberately made for you all to enjoy as we enter this year's Spring Equinox, a time of new beginning, rebirth, and renewal. Okay? That is all we want. So, please... Join us in this ritual by watching the video. Listen to our music if you'd like on Spotify or anywhere else you can find us under Serpents US and chat and engage with us via whatever, our socials. You can find our socials at facebook.com, we are serpents, uh, Twitter at we are serpents, Instagram at serpents metal, uh, we are serpents.bandcamp.com for merch. And if you're just kind of overwhelmed, you can always find us at we are serpents.com. Again, all we're asking is to join us by watching the video, listening to our music, and just chatting with us in this time. Um, and we hope that's not asking too much. So I hope you guys stay safe. And I hope you guys enjoy this episode. This was a really fun one to make. And being that uh, we're in a climate where everything's a little bit doom and gloom, I think uh, this will be a great listen for you all. So hope you guys enjoy. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Mr. McHale's Manner of Mischief, Magic, and Mystery, the podcast where we talk all things music, the occult, and just day-to-day -day life. I am your host, Andrew McHale, and welcome to the 6M Podcast. Sorry for the brief interruption. Uh, we are bringing you a special first-time-ever quarantine special episode leading off with this segment called The Lizard and the Wizard, where I am joined by none other than my partner in crime, The Lizard. That's me. A.K.A. Lizzie. I prefer Lizard. Uh, how, how are we doing today, Lizzie, in this state of quarantine at the moment? Well, I am the queen of quarantine. <laughs> haven't mm. left well i guess i did get groceries earlier today out yeah. of duress but uh other than that it's going well what time did you get groceries today 
Mm, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Now, why, why, why was that? Why did you get groceries at 10 a.m. versus everybody else? Because <laughs> I'm working from home. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was to avoid the hordes of people. I don't think there are hordes of people. They're all dead? Mm-hmm. Mm. So basically, this, I guess, episode is just a little hangout session from the house since none of us can go anywhere right now. For those of you that are living under a rock, we are currently all, uh, I guess, asked to stay in our homes during the coronavirus worldwide pandemic global event extravaganza. And uh, we are on day, what, five, six, five? Uh, last Thursday. Last Thursday, right? so probably five days. Um, getting cabin fever. We're locked in the nut house. We're locked up in the nut house. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it would be a good opportunity for people to just uh, hang out with us because they're not allowed to hang out with us in person apparently that's probably a good thing really for the general population you and i are pretty interesting when we uh are by ourselves without others around <laughs> yeah it's it's been on my to-do list to have you on the podcast mm -hmm. but uh I, I, some might deem it a little too racy for people Oh, that's not good. Oh, shit. I'm spinning in your chair and you're mad at me right now. Yeah. Fuck. You're fucking turning the mic cables into spaghetti. <laughs> well, it's my first appearance on a podcast. Ever. And ever. I am not a talk into a microphone type person. Uh, I'm a musician to an extent, but. What do you play? Violin. What? Yeah. Have you ever played any serpent songs? No, although I wish I had. Mm. Andrew won't, won't write me apart. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult. Mm. It's a little bit difficult, especially when we don't even know what the hell is happening from here on out. That's true. So I don't know if I'll be able to be writing any violin parts anytime soon. That's I might have true. to go flip some burgers for a little while. I don't think they want you to flip the burgers right now. I am the burger. I am the burger. I'm the Dimmu burger. Ah. But uh No, this is the first time I've been talking into a microphone probably for years and years and years. Mm. Which is fine with me, but I listen to your podcast every time it comes out. What? When I when I drive to my office, that's what I do early in the morning as I listen to your weekly podcast and this week thank goodness I don't have to drive to work because I wouldn't listen to it anyway if I did because I can't sound the sound of my own voice. <laughs> See that? I am sacrificing my listening of this episode for the rest of you who are stuck at home as well. Which is apparently getting bigger and bigger as each day passes because every day there's a new announcement that another industry is getting closed down. And what was it yesterday is uh, mm. restaurants and bars and stuff like that? Yeah. To, yeah. For dine in. Which, I don't know, I, I don't think I would want to go to Kuma's Corner or something like that. And Dude, we just, don't dine in anyway. Yeah. Let's be real. You and I are homebodies. Honestly, this has not affected me that deeply. I just am leery about going to the store. Otherwise, we're home a lot. We are. A lot of people don't understand, or I guess I really haven't painted that picture for people, that uh, a lot of my time personally is uh, spent pretty much in my studio, either making the podcast or working on music or making social media posts. And then aside from that, the only time we do get is usually like dinner time, hangout time. And then occasionally we'll go grocery shopping or work out, which we can't work out anymore, at least for a while. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a big change for me nor you no but i i have to laugh when i see all these people posting memes about uh i've been practicing for oh, yeah. social distancing my whole life and it's like bitch you don't even know oh really that's a thing 
Oh yeah. I don't I don't have social media disclaimer to everyone, so I am not aware unless Andrew tells me basically of what's trending or whatever. So like pretty much on a nightly basis I get my information from him as to what's like a controversy on Facebook or what's trending on Instagram. I don't know what the hell you even call those things. But honestly, if it wasn't for me, you'd probably be out of the loop a lot of the time. I'd probably be still walking the streets right now and whatever during this corona lockdown because I wouldn't know any better. Are you saying you're a street walker? Yes. You heard it here first, guys. Only when you're not looking. Oh, okay. Dun, dun, dun. (laughs) (laughs) So, being that we are stuck here, how are we getting through this so far? Oh, jeez. As we're talking, our lights are flickering here and there. They're not that's, flickering. That's always, that's always a good sign. Well, I saw no flicker, mm-hmm. but we're getting through just like we normally do. How are we doing that? Oh, uh, well, not leaving the house. Mm-hmm. Cooking all our meals at home, which we normally do. We usually only eat out one, like once a week, if that. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I mean, I'm cooking our meals. Mm-hmm. Well, dinners. Uh, I will not. I will not uh, oppose that. Other than that, you know, in the evenings we watch our watch our Apple TV. But it seems like the the options right now are they suck not good because there's nothing new coming out and everybody's stuck at home. So Netflix, Hulu, whatever the hell they are, they got to step some stuff up. Right well, we we've, be- we've become so starved for decent entertainment <laughs> that we well we bought fucking star wars for twenty dollars we like, did it was good though it was really good it was real good of course everybody had shit to say about it but i did not know it was the last one supposedly hmm. i'm sure there's gonna be one-offs here and there that's what i said when it was over and you were like no that's the last oh, one. one-offs just not the actual star wars saga you know what i mean Hmm. Like that solo shit. Well, I do love Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Yeah, too bad that's over. They'll come back. You that's when I'll, re- I'll resubscribe to Disney Plus again f- to watch your, Mandalorian and then cancel it. You and your baby Yoda fucking brought on this apocalypse. Baby Yoda is the best. He's, I believe his name is The Child. I for, told you my theory is that the... Speak into the microphone. <laughs> my theory is that baby yoda being depicted as he was in mandalorian it's the antichrist led to either a lot of people getting knocked up or a lot of people getting puppies because he's so cute and so little and he's a baby <laughs> i would like a puppy as opposed to getting knocked up yeah ah. i already have two dogs but what if I knocked puppy. you up and a puppy came out? Best case scenario. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that'll be happening a lot now. <laughs> I think dogs I think, coming no. out of women. <laughs> Maybe men are all men are dogs. Oh, but what is it? The uh, I think we're going to see our second boomer coming. What do you everybody's, mean second every, boomer? Everybody's fucking stuck at home. They're going to be everybody fucking. Everybody is stuck at home. They're going to be fucking so much jism. I agree. So much jism is being, pr- like, I guess you would say. Uh, Did you say jism? Yes, jism. What is jism? Um, milky white cum ropes. Hmm. As the greasy strangler says. <laughs> oh, that's Bullshit right. Bullshit artist. Yeah, that's right. Uh, oh. The other day, I subjected uh, the lizard to watching. I. The Greasy I, Strangler. I um, don't... Sorry, I interrupt you. The Greasy Strangler. I don't think that it would be subjected to because that makes it sound like I didn't enjoy it mm. because I actually did. However, the fact that I was eating dinner and then an ice cream bar whilst watching this old man with a very hangy dong with a red tip <laughs> smother himself head to toe in cooking grease and then strangle people with all that noise of the grease moving was not really conducive 
to eating dinner and ice cream while watching it, but I liked it. What about the paprika chips? I love the paprika chips. They're rich. Mm-hmm. All the flavor. No, it was good. And I liked when he went through that car wash because you know I love car washes. I don't know that. Really? No. Oh, that's like a like soothing. I love the smell and I love the squiggly noodle things that turn around like the whirling dervishes and then the, the noodles come and they the like The rolling lay. what? Whirling dervishes. That's what I always called the like the spinning things in a car wash that like ha- they look like. I didn't even know they had a name. I think I named them. I don't know. Dervishes. But yeah, he goes through a car wash naked to get all the, the murder grease off of him. As one will do. What else would you do? I don't know. That was a weird fucking movie. But I guess I should have seen your obsession for car washes coming because as I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast before, but both of us have taken quite uh, a liking towards TikTok and uh, one of the famous TikTok, I guess you would call it influencers i don't know i don't know selena spooky boo i also don't have tiktok you don't but you look over my shoulder when i'm watching tiktok Mm -hmm. uh pretty much to end the night and uh one of your favorite tiktokers has a segment where she goes into the car wash and she freaks out because she's scared of them supposedly i could probably coach her through Mm. make her see the beauty in a car wash the beauty in car washing but other than TikTok, because honestly, that takes up most of our nights now. We've also oh. we've also started to get into some pretty mind-numbing programming as well. Like what? Um, well, we do love our YouTube and our mukbang. <laughs> uh, we liked we are one of our guilty pleasures is sitting at home, eating dinner, watching people. Eat do mukbangs yeah yeah i guess what does it would it make us feel better about ourselves or do you just like it to- makes me feel comfortable which is disgusting <laughs> watching somebody go I got Taco Bell breakfast t- quesadilla i think it's just like seeing someone that you know is eating something that's like much worse than what you're consuming and it makes you feel better what about those asian ones when they're like like eating eating shrimp that explode or like an octopus did you see that one with the girl where she eats like the live Uh, octopus you put it on the tv and i covered up my eyes and asked you to tell me when it was over i started masturbating probably yeah I usually can handle gross stuff, but that was, no, that was beyond. Coming from someone who eats, uh, I wouldn't turn that on. Oh shit. Yeah. Turn that off. Jesus Christ. I'm touching buttons and stuff. She, for the folks listening at home, she (laughs) just turned, she just turned on my fucking tour rack. My you, my rig. You placed my chair here. In a time where our fucking lights are hanging on by a thread right uh, now. So oh, please. Yeah, that's another that's another awesome uh happening. What? As we're dealing with this situation. Our microwave blew a fuse. Yeah, our microwave blew a circuit in the house and we have to replace it. And uh being that I'm not a licensed electrician we sort of have to wait this one out and see if mm. uh, anything else starts to happen. We actually just had a water heater blow, what, like a week before this shit happened? No, it was over 10 years old. And it was leaking all over the floor. Yeah, it was leaking. Yeah. So Time it to get a new one. It blew. God damn it. <laughs> what were we talking about before the house? I don't know. <laughs> we're talking about how we're getting through. Oh, our shows. Uh, we watch crappy YouTube. Mm-hmm. We also are addicted to 90 Day Fiance. That's a problem. Uh, and all of its derivatives because there are a lot. There's before the 90 days. There's 90 Day Fiance. There's after the 90 days. There's happily ever after. There is one more. I can't remember. Pillow talk? Pillow talk. Yeah. 
That's my and shit. And I actually think there's a fucking another one too, which is shocking. Tonight? I don't know. Oh. I no, do we, love a 90 day though. Although in our defense, we do try and watch as many good shit, as much good <laughs> shit as possible. We uh we just watched Uncut Gems, what, the other night? That was pretty cool. Um, I am... That was, but that was stressful. I am going to bring up what we watched last night. What was that? That was the documentary about Matt, Matt McAfee. John McAfee, yeah. Uh, gringo. The, the virus software. Antivirus. <laughs> Is it a virus or an antivirus? I don't know. That guy... Mm-hmm. What did we learn about him through the the documentary called Gringo on Netflix? Mm-hmm. What did we learn about him last night, Andrew? <laughs> Aside from the fact that he likes it when people shit in his mouth? That is the only thing I'm talking about. Because uh, that's the only thing I heard in an over hour long documentary about John M- M- McAfee, McAfee. Yeah. Is that he likes to have young women that he pays to live with him shit through a hole in a hammock into his mouth and that's yeah. all i heard <laughs> yeah oh i thought you were gonna talk about <laughs> the odd contrast between M- mcafee and myself that you were oh. starting to feel alarmed by yeah you're you're similar people thank god you don't have the hammock shitting in your blood <laughs> Hey, I'm only in my early 30s, so I got a lot of life left in me. I guess As long as I don't get taken out by a fucking cold. You could turn to receiving hammock shit any day. Fuck yeah. I hope not. (laughs) Except for I have a hairy chest, so that might be a problem. Ew, what? Like if they missed, it would get stuck? Oh no, if I like rubbed it in. Yeah. That's not good. Well, you I don't gotta know. do it like the bell it, life where she goes <laughs> I can't do that. Um What a no, rush. It was bad though. That documentary was super interesting. But once you got to that point where they mentioned that, which I think is like three quarters of the way through, mm-hmm. then they showed any footage or any picture of him, that is the only thing I could think about. I honestly think mouth. that including that <laughs> kind of ruined the documentary. Uh, I'm sorry because it's all I could think about anytime I saw him after that you know because I was mentioning every time they showed a picture of him I'd be like he had shit in his mouth Mm -hmm. it's just it's too much but I don't want to give too much of the documentary away but what if those women were paid by the Belizean government to say that because that's the only power they have now that he's in America how about that I think I believed them Mm. based on the smiles on their face it's I only sh- smiles he wants me shit in his it's mouth. only smells yeah not good <laughs> whatever other than i guess watching trash tv and working our lives away you know we took a we took a nice walk the other day that was that was our first walk around our new neighborhood together mm-hmm. and we've lived here since the end of july Mm-hmm. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, I'm. I, it was a nice walk. A little awkward because you know people tend to stare at, this, at a time like this. You saw people staring. Yeah, I didn't notice it. I did. Eh. Well, I was walking two dogs, so I guess I didn't. I mean, notice. people don't know if like the purge is about to happen. So when they see a guy like me walking around, they tend to look. I'm sure. Hmm. You know, I didn't notice. Not to mention I had a weapon on my person just in case. Hi. What did you bring? The fucking... You know what it is. Don't act dumb. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Slice you up, fool. <laughs> Don't do that. Nobody fucks with the Jesus. The Jesus. Yes, the Jesus. But anyways, other than just us getting stir crazy or cabin fever, has has this impacted your your work life at all? Uh, for my work life, 
I generally work from home per week, four out of five days. Mm -hmm. So no, but it's weird because now everyone at my place of business is on the same level as me. Normally people are like in the office and whatever. Now it's like everyone's from home and it's weird. Can there be a chance that everybody moving forward is going to want to stay home? And I'm then, sure they all are. I and think then you're going to get fucked out of working at home? No, that wouldn't affect me. But I honestly think that this is like a weird situation in which a lot of employers are probably going to realize, oh, hey, our employees can work from home and are just as much, if not more productive, because I personally am more productive from home. And it's going to... I think it's going to change some more workplace environment because I think that employers that didn't want to try people working from home before now have been forced to, and they're going to be able to actually realize that there are benefits to it. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, they've been talking that, about that for a while. Just Yeah, I but guess, nobody ever had to do it. Yeah, but like just in passing, like I'll, I'll, I used to read about these articles like countries in europe were like um implementing what like 30 hour work weeks mm -hmm. like four days a week or whatever and um you know all of america pretty much scoffed at it slash like people that actually would you like that opportunity were like please can that happen here i mean i and then now that's happening it. everybody's bitching about being locked up in their house and they're like locked oh. up in the night house gotta go crazy no, I think it's feasible for anybody who has an employer that's open to it and well, you I can't you can't flip burgers at home well yeah you have to be working a certain type of job obviously yeah. it's not a option for anybody but for I'm, those that it is I think it makes sense and it's nice and I'm not hating on anybody that flips burgers I mean her and I have both worked in the restaurant service industry and uh, we know well I, I've never worked in the service industry amidst like a, a fucking national emergency, but we know that it's uh, quite the grind. Well, yeah. And now it's, you know, anybody who is hourly or working on tips or, you know, at this point is suffering. So it's terrible yeah. that it's affecting people that way. Well, as you know, my, my job is like the opposite of yours where we're expected to be out yeah. all over the world pretty much all the time but this this happening hasn't really put a dent in my workflow i mean it's definitely put some pressure on my head for preparing for what's to come because honestly like even if things do change and like uh employers start seeing like the benefit from working at home and whatever the fact is simple it's it's the fact that after this, the world probably is never going to be the same. People are going to be adapting. Uh, people are going to be catching up. Fucking employers are going to be figuring out other ways to, I guess, w minimize their Mitigate. risk. Mitigate is the word of the coronavirus. Mitigate. Yeah, but our, I think employers are going to start, like, Per their insurance, probably implementing more stuff to like put their uh, businesses less at risk, right? I think so. Yeah, I'm sure. It's uncharted territory. It's never happened before. So it's sort of like a, honestly, right now it's just a day by day thing. You don't know what's going to mm. be announced. You don't know what your boss is going to do any given day because it's essentially, I mean, it's a free for all right now with these limitations and people trying to figure out how to work within them. Yeah. Well, coming from an outside perspective, looking into my world, what, what is your understanding of the impact, the effect that this has all had on just merely my own life and my own career and my own, um, circles. What do you, what do you, what can you tell the people listening as to how badly people like myself have been impacted? Well, 
feel like this is a quiz. No, it's just, <laughs> this is like a firsthand account. Like you see what, I guess, pre- strain this is put on me. And like, I could sit here on the podcast and bitch the whole time about how, you know, my life is probably never going to be the same, blah, blah, blah. But it's better, I think, for the listeners to hear like a different account of well, how things have been. I mean, I, I guess I would say that I can absolutely tell that there's like a different level of stress other than what you normally have because, you know, of, of the uncertainty as a whole. And I mean, I think that this is the first time in your life and in the last, I mean, I don't know how many years, all the years that the concert shows, events, things like that have been canceled at such a ex- an extreme rate and immediately. And I, it's just never happened before. And I, I know that it causes, you know, you to become concerned about what's to come. You know, we don't know when it's going to be lifted. When is there going to be able to be a concert again? You know, that's that's the crux of your your industry, industry. Yeah. sorry i can think of the word and it, it's weird to see you you know worried about like sort of the most basic element of the music industry you know being able to perform being able to uh, uh, you know engage with your fans and things like that like that's that's such a basic uh, component of the music industry that I don't think has ever been compromised before. And this is the first time. And so I think it's very weird and uncharted territory and similar to all industries really, but it's, it's very strange I think for music because that's such a big part of what you do. Yeah. And the industry has been hurting a long time before uh, coronavirus, but this has definitely put probably the nail in the coffin. And at this point, I, I, from what I understand, a lot of people are trying to look beyond this and try and innovate um, the industry. They're trying to find workarounds for it. But, you know, a lot of people forget that bands that are in our position, that are mainly independent and self-reliant, we're really going to get the shit end of the stick. And I've, I've probably shown that in the house, you know. I mean, the other day, mm. I didn't even get out of bed uh, up until five and I didn't even want to get up because mm-hmm. of how depressed I am because honestly I've been doing this my whole adult life I've been doing this as a teenager and onward and if anybody has anything other else to say about that you can see me because uh, I've been doing this for quite a long time and uh, I've never had everything that I've worked for disappear in a blink of an eye and when I say disappear, I'm not saying that the band itself is disappearing. It's mainly, um, I, I, I can't even explain it. Like, like, you know, like we can't even think about shows right now because yeah. number one, we don't know how long this is going to last. And number two, as soon as whatever gets lifted, everybody else is going to be booking 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 and everything's going to be slam jam-packed for i mean we're already talking i already see people talking about next year like people are already rescheduling their tours for next year and that only uh i mean think about it no promoter no bar owner venue owner is going to sit there and gamble on a band like us versus you know this tour package that tour package whatever and everybody's just going to be trying to make their money, make their money yeah. back. And Every, um, everyone's going to be trying to recoup money that they lost during this. So, yeah, it's yeah. going to be, I would think, a struggle for a bit. But also, times like these and situations like this that are unprecedented can bring people together to work together better. And, you know, maybe it's a it's sort of a reset that different industries needed to realize, hey, you know, we should reach out to the little guy a little more, give everybody a chance. Hey, maybe more of your employees can work from home and be happier than they thought. Maybe it's a a, a, a situation where there can be a lot of realization to make things better and make things work better and people work together. You know, you never yeah. know how it's going to turn out. And I mean, I know in general in our 
us as a whole, you generally see the darker side of things or the negative, and I am generally positive. Um, and so, you know, I think that that impacts how I how I think of things as well. But well, you said something to me yesterday that really kind of struck a nerve or whatever. And the sorry, our dogs are our barking dogs are barking as upstairs. per usual. Um, you you said something about uh, I tend to see things five steps ahead or oh, whatever. Oh yeah, I and did say that. Was it yesterday or the day before? Yeah, yesterday. You do. Why did I bring that? Oh, because you were upset. Yesterday was the no. day that you 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 were upset. You know, obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I, I, I think I told you, you know, just take a, take a little bit of a step back, take a breather from what's going on. Because I feel like in general, when like bad things as a whole, like to society, to the country happen, I think that, that you, you, it's not taking it personally. It's just, you feel it really hard. And I think that you, you think ahead to like where, you know, normal people right now are like, okay, tomorrow we'll see what the announcement is. We'll go from there. Nothing is fucked here, dude. Things will keep going. It'll be fine. But you see, which I, I really don't, you see five steps ahead of everybody else to the economy is fucked. I'm never going to play a show again. You know, things like that. Like I, I'm not supposed explaining that really well but i i really think that you see things into the future i mean you're a you're sort of a worrier that normal people don't think about and i think that's the reason you're taking this you know a little bit harder than some other people who are just like okay we're gonna get through this day and then tomorrow you know maybe we'll be able to do something different maybe there'll be a development maybe there'll be something positive but you're planning for like ultimate demise Constantly. And, yes. And you do that with all situations. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and just for the listeners listening at home, how often am I right? Yes, I know. But sometimes you're not. Mm -hmm. And as the... Uh, but I'm prepared. I'm really not that much of an optimist, <laughs> but when teamed up against you, I'm like the eternal optimist. But really, I'm not. I'm, I consider myself more of a realist. Mm-hmm. But in situations like this where there's really nothing to go off of, nothing to predict what's going to happen in the days to come, mm. I like to choose the the route of more, everything's going to be all right, other than seeing six months down the line when everything is fucked, mm -hmm. which is what you do. And I think that you can feel all of that. You can predict all that. You can mull over that in like two hours and it really affects you your me your mental health i guess in general which is shit as yeah. the world probably knows with the last album i did and it sucks because <laughs> you know i you know i help i try to help you not not really be such of a seeing five steps ahead of everybody else doom and gloom person but you know you can't take that out of somebody you can just try to make them see that you know there are other possibilities as but well i mean i mean in this situation, just just for reference here, you know, you and I had tickets to see Devin Townsend, mm -hmm. and we I got it as a Christmas present from you, and we were really excited about the show. We met yeah. Devin at Nam. We told him like how excited we were, and um, before this thing even got announced as like a fucking whatever pandemic outbreak, mm -hmm. whatever. I even told you, I was like, something tells me this show's going to get canceled. And if not, I genuinely hope this show were to get canceled because, you know, this, you and I, we were at NAMM together and a lot of people don't know, but people from all over the world traveled to NAMM and, um, you know, including people from China or salesmen from China. Oh, yeah. And uh, while we were there, the coronavirus, like, panic started mm -hmm. to build like on the news to the point where we yeah. were pretty nervous even on flying home i think it was our flight back that it had become announced that there were more cases in the united states as opposed to china and yeah it was we were about to get on the plane to fly back to chicago and you were like well if you're gonna go to the bathroom 
you know, watch out, take some hand sanitizer, be yeah. careful, don't touch anything. So I, I think that was right then. And that's where it became, you know, a bigger issue than we, we thought it was going to be. So, yeah. And like, go figure, we find out about this shit. Like what well, we were sitting in a coffee shop, like in downtown LA. And then we, we, I, I, I looked on fucking Facebook and saw like, Starting tomorrow, all flights to Chicago will be screened and all this shit. And we were flying home that day. And I was like, thank the fucking stars that we got home. You never know. Devin Townsend may have had information we didn't. Because when we met him at Nam, Mm -hmm. I think Nam, 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 Nam. It's the same thing. Uh, He was wearing gloves inside. Yeah. Maybe he knew. Maybe he knew. Or maybe he's just a germaphobe like most public figures these days. Never know. But I think more artists are going to be walking around with gloves after the fact, after all this is said and done. But I I personally think, even as a fan of Devin, like, and of, of course, like a bunch of other bands and shit, I think it was the smartest thing for him to do because I personally, speaking on my own behalf, want to see more years of Devin Townsend even though right now like he started a fundraiser Mm -hmm. like everybody's starting a fundraiser right now every club every venue and I get that it's but the thing is is like eventually those clubs will get some monetary support and stuff like that where the artists like myself like Devin were kind of left out to sea Mm -hmm. but um you know you can see that uh these cancellations suck But I personally would rather have all the artists be safe, all the staff be safe, all the fans. I I know I noticed like a lot of people, you know, starting to say, let's do the fucking punk rock thing and let's throw a show in my basement. Let's show, let's do a show here, blah, blah, blah. blah. And I'm like, how can you be so stupid? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm glad that a lot of these major tours get canceled got canceled and shit because honestly let's say you and i went to devon townsend and then somebody there was sick we go back home Mm -hmm. then we go visit your parents or my parents my grandparents they get sick because of us and it's like seeing all these people online bitching you know what the fuck why is this canceled uh this is a, a conspiracy blah 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 and it's just like dude take this shit seriously sit your ass home like we are <laughs> and just be fine like yeah i get it i get it you want to go out you want to get a drink you want to get fucked <coughs> you want to do whatever sorry i don't have corona guys i just it's the corona it's the rona it's corona time it's miss rona but um yeah i mean i i applaud all the major guys that were like hey we should stop and it might have even been their agents or their insurance people telling them hey uh you gotta stop but i'm happy that everybody's just kind of taking a moment even though we're all paying very dearly for it you know yeah i agree i mean some people can't cancel well, I things can't. and whatever but you know i didn't have dates to cancel but no, no, no. I mean know. other occupations. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a musician by occupation, you, oh. so I have the other viewpoint, the, the normal, the normies. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's the thing, and that's why the yin and yang, the dualist, the dualism that is you and I, is that, you know, we are sort of opposites, mm-hmm. but we come together in like harmony in a yeah. weird way and uh it's balance you know you may not understand what's going on and i don't understand what's going on from a just a, like a normal person's point of view and with that you know i tried to take a look at the situation where everybody's doing fundraisers and shit right where you know i look at everybody else who's hurting you know from this and I said, I, who am I to ask anybody for their money right now? Everybody's panicking for money. Yeah, absolutely. Know? I mean, it's happening to everybody, I think. Well, not everybody, but... No. But that's the, that's why I decided to refund everybody their vinyl pre-orders. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, most people might think that's stupid and everybody's saying, buy, buy merch, buy merch, buy merch. And it's like, yo, merch still costs money to fucking ship out. I yeah, sure absolutely. as hell don't want to go to the post office. <laughs> I'd rather just fucking have you guys stream the music and listen to the podcast and be fucking merry because that's mm-hmm. music is there for that distraction is there to put you in another world a fantasy of sorts and Absolutely. Well, I, and I, I think not going forward with that and refunding people is the sort of a realistic noble thing to do because you're not taking anyone's money from them for a period of time where you know you're, you're gonna have to produce something and then give them the product they paid for and you know you're also not you're, you're protecting yourself as well because we don't know what's going to happen you know we have yeah. no idea if it's going to what if something happens to banks whatever we're going to need whatever money's in our account it's going to become cash only who knows what's going to ba- happen i don't know but yeah trump said something about yeah, that today i want oh yeah. really mm-hmm. i want i haven't looked at any news today i want to keep what i have right now in my account and know that that's there and not i'm not frivolously spending on anything even though right now the only thing fun to do is like shop online but yeah. i'm not doing it even though i did earlier today what <laughs> i text andrew earlier i was working in my office upstairs and i was like these jeans i want are a hundred dollars off I've been waiting for this sale for however you want me to get a get you a boy version. And so I did. But I won't do anything else. Except for it seems everything going is going on sale, so that's bad. That's true. Everything is going on yeah. sale. Well, because they're trying to stimulate the economy exactly. by lowering prices because we're all home in front of our computers. So I need to not do that. And I also <laughs> need to not buy any gear while I'm Stranded. We just need to convince each other that packages are contaminated and we can't have any come into the house. <laughs> Essentially. But speaking of speaking of uh guilty purchases. Oh. In this Don't I'm gonna turn around. In oh, this oh. uh <laughs> current state of things, a lot of people are rushing to the grocery stores and oh, um, bombarding the stores of toilet paper uh hand sanitizer hey flour sugar and um you on the other hand well us when we both go or when you go alone you 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 see you tend to see it as a time an opportune time to uh what make some guilty purchases what did what did you end up buying today god damn it <laughs> i need a sweet treat <laughs> Because we're stuck. And if some shit happens, I don't know, aliens come and abduct us all. This was all part of a plan. Tomorrow we're all gone. I want to eat a king size Kit Kat before I go. All right. That's what I bought today. I bought a king size Kit Kat. I bought a king size Twix. What else did I buy? A a box of donuts. Shit. A box of donuts. Uh huh. Is that it? I don't That's know. It. You tell me. That's it. I and did on the do first, that on the first day it of cl- the emergency announcement. We got carrot cake Oreos, uh huh, a take five bar, and a Reese's Easter egg, and bar. a box of Stroop waffle wafers. Yes, the Stroop waffles are gone. <laughs> the take five is gone. The carrot cake Oreos are gone, and those Kit Kats are about to be gone. Today. That's mine. The Twix was for you. The, who the fuck said I like Twix? <laughs> I was hoping you did. I really didn't know. I was like, I don't actually know what kind of fucking candy he likes. Because like, we never eat candy. Mm-hmm. I what? like dark chocolate. Yes, but that's not what they have and by like the cash fruit. register at the end mm-hmm. when I'm making impulse purchases. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. They have dark chocolate Kit Kats. I didn't see them. That's the shit. They don't right now. Or I like if I'm if I'm going out right now. If I'm go, if I <laughs> if the fucking <laughs> FEMA comes with a with a gun to my head and it yeah. tells me, hey, we got to put you out of your misery. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask for pomegranate and Ferrero Rochers. Rochers. Yeah, whatever. What kind? The regular one. Oh really? I like the those white ones. What? 
I know. I thought I don't you know don't like, like white chocolate. It's the only kind of white chocolate I like because it has coconut shavings on the top. Question: What's your death row meal? I'm sure we've had this conversation before, um, but I feel like it's a fluid answer and it changes for people. I'm curious. Uh, my death row meal would be uh, a combination of Pepsi, pomegranates, and <laughs> pussy. You, pussy is not part the three of three P's. I'm talking about what a correctional officer can deliver you yeah, in you your cell. They ain't gonna deliver you pussy. I eat that up. You wish they can deliver me some man pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I asked for a salad, wait. extra tossed. Wait, what? <laughs> what kind of dressing do you want on that bee hole? Fucking Caesar. Really? Mm, no, I didn't see that coming. You would want. You would want balsamic vinaigrette. No, I was gonna uh, go with full sugar raspberry vinaigrette. That's what you would no, want actually, on a bee hole. If it was, it was my time to go. It would be full sugar French. That's my favorite. Wow. I'm learning so much. I love French dressing. Like the red one. Not like the creamy <laughs> one. Like the red ass one. So you want Pepsi, a pomegranate, and a butthole drenched drenched, drenched in French dressing. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you or at all. Or I could just settle for some Rizzas. For those of you that uh, don't know what Rizzas is. That sounds good. Uh, it is a Middle Eastern restaurant in the Chicagoland area. But not all are the same. No. And being a Middle Eastern, I am very picky with that stuff. So no, you. she is she is very well educated now. They are not all the same. They aren't. Mm. So that's part of your death row meal. Rizzo's? Yeah. I would say so, yeah. What would you get for dessert? Or is the tossed salad the dessert? <sighs> dessert? Mm-hmm. That's a ter- that's a tricky one. Maybe something red velvet. BS, you would get something with marzipan, hands down. That's hard to find. No, that doesn't matter. I mean, if it was that's all bets are off, yeah. Means would, all bets are off. Yeah, I would do something any- with raspberry in it with marzipan outside. Okay. Like a marzipan cake. I was going to say, bullshit artist. Bullshit artist. Horseshit artist. Right, Hootie tootie disco cutie duck shit. Oh god, you're welcome. This That's my favorite is, part of the movie. She's gone left. Probably no one has seen the greasy strangler either. Um, if anyone wants to know, it's on Amazon Prime. Yes. Oof. Jeez. Don't watch whilst eating. I mean, that's the best time. Oh. Would you like to know what my death row meal is? Yes. Thanks for asking. You caught me off guard with the marzipan. Now I'm thinking about marzipan. I'm thinking about the marzipan <laughs> logs we had in I Iceland. Know. They were so good. Which we I hope we I hope days. we can still go in September. I know I was thinking about that earlier. Apparently Greenland just got their first case. Great. It's coming closer. I mean, we're all gonna get it. Whatever. I don't want to talk about Corona. We Corona? covered that. Corona. Well, what the fuck is your last meal do you want to know it's disgusting i bet it's gonna be a franchise, isn't it no a plain hot dog on a poppy seed bun no condiments mm. you want pumpernickel <laughs> no <laughs> but good one uh i also would like a pizza puff <laughs> I any love type pizza puff no just or like a fucking cafeteria pizza puff I don't know. Like from the like one school. from the same place where you got the plain hot dog. Okay. So good. So any mom and pop joint in Chicago? Uh-huh. And then I need a <laughs> diet root beer. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm a dick. Andrew will tell anyone. But you are diet particular with babe. your diet root beer. Yes, can't be Barg's. Has to be A&W or Mug. mug. Diet Mug is hard to come by. I sound sad. I sound like a sad old Diet broad. Diet mug is hard to come by. <laughs> Shit. Attention, everybody. <laughs> what do I want for dessert? Uh-huh. I haven't thought about this, really. I don't How's like ice cream that much. 
Uh, well, yes. did I put you on the spot? I started asking questions. You, you do love your cool for. whip. Did that cool whip? Cool mm. whip. No, that's not it. What is my dessert? I don't you know fucking what I know. like. I don't remember. Me neither. <gasps> oh, dole whip. What? <laughs> it's just the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Uh, no, probably like a M- McFlurry. A McFlurry. I love a McFlurry. What did I get you for your birthday cake? What was it? Was it chocolate? I don't know. I ate oh, it. You don't like buttercream, right? Is that you? That's not me. That's oh. your mother. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Betty. <laughs> that was for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My mom's real picky with her cakes. But uh, uh, I thought you had the same uh, affliction. No. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Well, shit. <laughs> now you guys know what to get us whenever you see us at your... Uh, if we're dying. I guess. Damn, I love a plain hot dog, though. I want to try... It, I, it's all about the Polish sausage. If any... Ugh! Uh, no. Or get them nice Maxwell Street Polish from Portillo's. Fuck you. I, I don't like a Polish. I don't even know what Polish it is. Polish sausage. Sausages. <laughs> Ditka. Ditka. Sausage. Into Chicago. Chicago. Ditka. Can you tell I'm hungry? I'm fucking starving. I was going to say something else about food. Lumanati's. Mm, we might get that tonight. Mm. What the so, hell? Uh, oh. Chicken wings? Going to bring it up because I've been talking about it for days. What? I want to try McDonald's. Not McDonald's. Wendy's breakfast. What about Wendy's breakfast that has you so enamored <sighs> with it? Well, we watch those damn mukbangs on the the YouTube at night. Mm-hmm. And there was one and I saw what they had and then I looked up the full menu. I hate all fast food breakfast, but Wendy's breakfast has promise. And from what I saw, there is a honey butter chicken sandwich on a biscuit that comes with seasoned potato wedges that are supposed to be akin to larger checkers fries that was my mind blowing but andrew won't (laughs) let me try it right now because of coronavirus so i'm just suffering in silence i'm keeping her captured pretty much i want that honey butter biscuit (laughs) you're welcome i said no you're twisting my words i said once this is over our treat, when we both have ballooned up already, <laughs> will be going to Wendy's for their... Oh, I don't want to go there. Oh, what the fuck are you talking about? I just want to bring it home. No, man. Oh. We gotta have the experience. Then I don't want it. Should we do a mukbang, guys? Should we do a, <laughs> a Wendy's breakfast mukbang? <laughs> Is that what we're gonna do and we're just gonna get coronavirus mukbangs how to get fat in eight weeks well there's already <laughs> i don't know if you know this but there's already coronavirus porn did Shut you know that the fuck up there is indulge me immediately what i mean i can indulge you after this what is it what's it's the- just people dressed up as sick people or like <laughs> doctors <laughs> And they're all fucking each other. No, there's not. Yeah. They're in like hazmat suits. It's like the only way I could... Did you see this or did you hear about it? clips of them. They've been posted on Facebook and shit like that. Oh, really? Yeah. I was going to say like, what's that like the top thing when you go to like... I hope not. Porn hub or whatever. That would be weird. (laughs) Um... Yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting to see. Apparently, <laughs> the cure for coronavirus lies in <laughs> someone's pussy, so they have to get it out. Really? See, I would think that the cure was like in one man's semen and he would give his medicine to all. I'm sure there's some plot lines like that somewhere. I find it interesting that they made it that secret is buried in a pussy. That's... <laughs> I mean, what else would that, it be? It, it entertains that me. is the portal of life as we know it. So the elixir of life might be within. You don't know. Wow. <laughs> that was my German. Wow. Wow. 
Wow. Wow. You can really dance. We're, we're th- yeah, we're going to be watching that shit later because I need to know what that's about. What, the coronavirus form? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you only have a day to live. Come Is fuck that me. really that's what, some, it's like? that's what it's like, dude. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> that's another one of our guilty pleasures. We like to watch I know not the races. hardcore porn, but softcore porn together. <laughs> We like to watch. Well, well, (laughs) I like to get really high and watch this stuff with you, and you just kind of go for the ride, and uh, we laugh. We laugh at this stuff together. We do. Oh wait, weed is legal, so I can talk about that. You can. I I I do appreciate the the skin of Max. Yeah. It's it's we watch the trash where like. They're having sex, but somehow it's somehow entering his his member is entering her like above her belly button on yeah. the like the left side under. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> like the it sharks did, have escaped. My f- there's only one thing to do now. <laughs> my favorite thing is where it's clear that how their bodies are undulating at each other does not match up to where a hole could possibly be, and you just have to watch them act that out for sometimes kind of a long period of time yeah. honestly and the weird part is is like some of these production <laughs> companies will like really love these scenes without music oh yeah so it's just like i forgot about that no music and just like oh yeah and the guy's like oh fuck mm-hmm. shit ah, ah. They, they love that <laughs> shit softcore porn is just they love that they do oh the the <sighs> inhale through the teeth yeah <sighs> yes that's like a they have to perfect that before being cast in any softcore porn like that's a necessity it's kind of like the can you get a oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> you wanna watch me fuck yep that's it yeah mm-hmm. it's it's good though and the storylines are and then you wonder why, how those actors got there and what it was actually like to act those parts where you were just banging up against each other for no purpose for 10 to 15 minutes and faking that you're enjoying yourself. I mean, if that was my job, I'd be enjoying it. That's true. Yeah. But I feel like the filming of it must just be like awkward and weird. I mean, yeah, of huh. course. Especially when you and they get the nice close-ups of like the guy's perfect shaved, <laughs> bleached ass. I want the job of butt shaver and butthole bleacher on a soft core porn set. All right, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we can make it happen. No, the, the that, folks, that the folks a, at the manor can make it happen. Unfortunately, that would be quite a downgrade. So I'll I'll, I'll yeah. stay stay put. Maybe maybe after the coronavirus, maybe I'm looking into a uh, a new industry, a new job field. Aren't we always? Ash shaver and bleacher. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, even a spritzer. I'll give it a little spritz with a bottle. What do you mean a spritzer? Make it look glistening a little bit. Oh, like with some oils? Yeah. Some Assyrian the girls, oils? The, the women's tits are always pointed north, and they're always fucking just wet and fucking you know what i'm talking about maybe the ones that are like almost popping that out of their chest that was from a specific softcore porn no, about f- big titty ladies there's a few of them that end up in the shower i don't know if you've noticed oh, that yeah. yeah it's because it's easy filming they're all trapped in a small little <sighs> compartment the <sighs> director really- probably just sets the shit on a tripod and's like up oh, back in a while Ooh, I need a shower because I'm so dirty. Mm-hmm. Disclaimer: We don't watch this stuff to get aroused. We no, strictly it's just watch a this joke. stuff for entertainment purposes only. I don't think we've ever. Yeah, no, it's it's just to make fun of. Not Other really people. make fun of because I appreciate it for its comedic value. <laughs> I don't think that was the intention, though. It's not, but. Mm-hmm. Everyone finds enjoyment in things in different ways. Like you might think this part of something is beautiful or good or whatever. Another person wouldn't think that. Yeah. Like I enjoy watching movies about space and and the sea. You had to, didn't you? And you enjoy watching criminal docs 
and murder mysteries. That's true. And all the garbage on like E. I no, it's not E. <laughs> it's Bravo. Oh, sorry. Same thing. Uh huh. For me, at least. Yes, that's a problem. But that's my trash TV, and I don't ask you to watch it, so you can't judge. I'm the judge, jury, and executioner, too. Yeah, I know. But yeah, outer space is not my thing. Why? I like fake outer space movies, so like Star Wars. Like, you just know it's not real. It's meant to not feel real, or Fifth Element. I don't know if you knew this, but Interstellar wasn't actually filmed in space. No shit. None of them were. I'm saying, but that's meant to be realistic. Like, you know, Star Wars, Fifth Element. What else am I thinking of? They're, oh, they're, you mean Star Wars when they are on top of the cruiser in the middle of space? Yes. Where, I like when, where you can't outer breathe. space movies where it's so outlandish that you know it's not meant to seem real. I hate the ones like Interstellar. What else is there? There's so Interstellar many. was fantastic honestly it was pretty good that's like the first space movie that i've liked in a while but normally they don't scare let me leave <laughs> no normally they scare the shit out of me and that one did but it, it's cinematographic cinem, cinem, cinematograph yeah cinematography was worth watching a movie about realistic outer space i just love the fact where they like visualized going through a black hole and <laughs> you should see her face right now she looks terrified it scares it scares the shit out of me. i loved it I like would, the like no. when he was like because when he was going through the black hole he was meant to document it and like when he was like talking in the middle of nothing i was just like yes <laughs> i loved it True. i was just like i oh my can you imagine can you imagine being alone no going through a black hole because if i imagined that i'd probably have like a mental fucking breakdown (laughs) and lose my shit forever that's why i protect myself from these outer space movies i don't want to know if it comes to a point in future you know 50 years from now where everyone has to flee this planet and go to outer space for their own safety or to continue living and Mm. we have to go you're gonna have to like drug me and Mm. drag me drug and drag it's the only time I want to be drugged and dragged. I, I won't. I don't want to go up there. It scares the shit out of me. I, I, and that, and that, I can't. And do that it. right to drug and drag you is specifically my right, right? Yeah, I'm giving consent. Yeah. I guess yeah. now. I don't want to no go to else, space. No one else get any ideas there. Space scares the shit out of me. Mm-mm. I mean, it's scary, but you know. You know me and the listeners probably don't know that I just love the aspect of the unknown. Same thing with the under under the sea or the ocean. Mm-hmm. I love the aspect that we don't know all of what's underneath us. But that's an, fucking great. That ties back to the our conversation about you thinking five steps ahead of normal people. You can like imagine what that would be like or under the sea, what that would be like. I can't go to that level because it scares me. I I prefer to live in the present and not imagine like bad things or I, I'm sure it's going to shoot me in the ass someday, but that's like, you can like find interest in that and stuff when I'm just like, I got to block that out because it's so scary. Well, that's, that's even, that even goes with the occult practice in the house. You're, you are no hands on with that stuff. You no. You don't believe in that stuff even, but. And I'm not religious. I'm just, I'm just not anything. Yeah. (laughs) But I love, I love the unknown and I love, um, the perspective that it can give. Like even with occult knowledge, esoteric knowledge, Mm -hmm. or even think like using that towards just being in an abyss. Like one of my favorite (laughs) movies and you don't even know this. And I, I wish I knew the name of the movie. But one of my favorite movies growing up was a, I think, an Italian movie, and it was based on a deep sea diver. Mm. And uh, when he would go underwater, he would be in pitch black uh, sea. Yeah. And he was a deep sea diver, like one of those competition divers that like don't have a mask or anything. <laughs> so <Okay. like laughs> the guy would go underwater into the deep sea in the black with no anything 
and he would just hold his breath like he was like a timing like i don't know what you would call that like what a timer is this movie i don't know what it is but i loved it as a child and i watched it all the time uh, we're gonna have to find that because i'm curious now that sounds horrifying it, i can literally picture some of the scenes in my mind like it's it's one of i had a dream like several months ago about being scuba diving and whatever i think you were in the dream mm-hmm. i think i lost you whatever we were like trapped like way deep in the ocean and like i couldn't get to the surface Mm -hmm. that's terrifying i don't want any part of that it's because i became a troll in the dream (sighs) and i i dwell in the deep sea that's creepy yeah (sighs) see i can't imagine stuff like that because it scares the shit out of me but that's probably why you know we work you're that i'm this you're the occult and all that which i actually find very interesting when you tell me about it but it's not something that i like focus on but you know but it's not it's not in vain like as you said before no i i think i tend to think five steps ahead Mm -hmm. and what are we doing right now what is society doing right now right we're venturing onward into the unknown hello it's true but not into space yet. Thank we are. God. Sh- sh- We're on a ball in space. Sh- Shut your mouth. I also just saw that they what just... What did you just say? We're on a what? what We're what? on a ball in space. Explain. We're on a rock in the middle of space. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Yeah. That's perspective for you. I don't want to think about that. Someday it's all going to come crashing down and you're going to be like, I told you I four fucking, million times. I fucking hope when that day comes, the fucking aliens are like, yo, this guy needs to be saved. And I'll be like, can I get a plus one? That would be, be best like, case scenario. They'd be like, fine. Would you go with me? Yeah. Drug and drag. Fine. The aliens will be fine with that. What if they're the hostile ones and they want me to be a warlord? Hmm. <laughs> If, I mean, if that's the only way to survive, I'm going. I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take it. Good. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, the aliens are going to save us. I'm like, if, if anything, they are staying the fuck away from us right now. If they even were here. I think we're on our own with this one. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> and on he that goes, note. He goes and he goes and he goes. And on that note, I think it's time to go. I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. We should eat. Yes. And watch 90 Day Fiance. Oh yeah, we got part two. But wait, we got to make a TikTok. Shit. If you guys don't already follow me on TikTok, follow me at Andrusifer. So that's A N D R U C I V E R, and that is also my handle on Facebook and Instagram as handle. well. At Andrusifer. <laughs> This, I think this mic cover smells like cologne or what is this? Well, considering that this podcast, <laughs> Sorry. considering that this podcast is meant to be just me and this is my first guest on I've, the podcast. I'm going to get kicked off. I only have, well, I have an assortment of mics, but I only have one vocal mic. So you are using my stage mic, which is what? On, if you lift up the windscreen, what's on there? Is this sure? No, I mean, lift up. What did you say? Oh, yeah. Uh, what is that? I don't know. It looks like there's like a brownish red uh-huh. something staining the... Oh, the wind... The, the grill? Yeah, it's not good. What the fuck is well, it looks like either rust or blood. Probably because when we play... And I've had this by my mouth the whole time. Well, it's my blood. Ah! That's okay. Well, when I play, I end up bashing my face into it, so sometimes I get a bloody lip. This is the one you've only had since, like, Christmas time? Mm-hmm. Two years ago? Mm-hmm. Well, shit. Yeah. You bled on this? As I do with all things serpents. My blood... <laughs> <laughs> my blood is all over it. Are you the serpy? I'm the serpy. You and you're the, the serpent queen. But I think that about wraps up for this segment of The Lizard and the Wizard. 
I hope you've all enjoyed this. I think this was a lot of fun. If you guys want to see more of these or hear more of these, as always, please comment, uh, letting us know your thoughts. What did you think? You think it was pretty good? Yeah, yeah it was fun. fun. I started off staring at the wall, yeah. and now I'm looking at you, so I guess, yeah. Yeah. I've never done this before. I've never... And I've never interviewed someone before, so this is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird. But considering that we are on... Locked I mean, up in the North House! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> considering that we don't know how long this is going to be, and uh, we really wanted to just kind of... I I well, I wanted to make an episode that's a little bit more lighthearted than the uh, doom and gloom that everyone is projecting out there. So, I mean, if if we are in in this situation for longer, I mean, I I think I, this would be a good uh, look into our lives as we mm-hmm. handle this epidemic or pandemic. Let's- because honestly, I I saw a meme, and I'm just gonna wrap up here i saw a meme the other day yeah Hmm. it said uh you know during the coronavirus what are you going to tell your grandkids like when they ask what did (laughs) you guys do during the coronavirus uh pandemic and i was like huh i wonder what would we even say and then i was like well let's document it so it's documented i appreciate your 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 penchant for documenting things like that i'm so you know i'm bad but five steps ahead i'm horrible at pictures like yeah all that stuff if you guys wonder why i don't have enough pictures or anything of me doing cool stuff you can uh i like to live life in the moment okay in the moment i try all right well we're gonna keep trying we're gonna keep uh keep the train rolling as always, guys, if you like this episode, please check out the other episodes before it. And all as always, please subscribe to the podcast, rate the podcast if you can. I know some formats you can only mm-hmm. just subscribe to the podcast. So as I said earlier, we're not asking for anything from you guys. I'm not asking for any donations, any merch or anything like that. All I ask is of your support. So please support the podcast by subscribing rating the podcast and spreading it a little bit that'd be great spreading it not the right verbiage right now spread it Uh. share the podcast and uh if you guys feel inclined feel free to send in your questions comments concerns or your band for a feature on the podcast send it on my socials at andrusifer a-N-D-R-U-C-I-V-E-R, and that is Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Cool? Cool. Cool. And being that we are in this situation right now, I thought it would be appropriate if we end the podcast without a featured artist, um, just given kind of like a moment of silence. Deep. I know. All right, we'll see you guys next, or I'll see you guys next week. Or mm. maybe we'll see you guys next week. Mm. We'll 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 figure this out as long as you guys uh you know drop a line and let us know what we're doing. All right. Stay safe out there, stay inside and get weird. Yeah. <laughs>